In the last video, we talked about examples of Hilbert spaces and the kinds of elements or vectors that you expect to find within those Hilbert spaces. In this video, we'll get deeper into what the vectors or functions in Hilbert space represent and introduce a mathematical formalism to guide us the rest of the way. To start off, we'll begin with the first postulate of quantum mechanics, which is that the physical state of a system is represented by a vector in Hilbert space. For example, the wave function of a particle is related to the probability of finding the particle at a particular position r at a given time point t. Now since it's related to this probability, we say that the wave function represents the state or the condition of the system. Because of this, wave functions are vectors in a Hilbert space. You'll see that they're actually members of the Hilbert space which consists of the set of normalized square integrable functions that we talked about in the previous video. Another example could be the spin state of a particle. Recall from GenChem that within an orbital, an electron can be either spin up or spin down. We can represent these two spin states using vectors in Rn, which, as you guessed, is a Hilbert space. Now that we've spoken about what vectors in Hilbert space represent, we can get to the real meat of the video, which is Dirac notation. Dirac notation is just a way for physicists to make computations easier for themselves in quantum mechanics. It basically just gives us symbols to represent objects like vectors, inner products, and operators. A vector, for instance, is represented by something called a ket. For example, if we're using psi to represent the spin-up state of a particle, we can write psi equal to 1 and 0. If we're using psi to represent the wave function, we could write psi equal to f of the vector r comma t. Now, if you're particularly observant, you'll notice that this ket that I wrote here seems incomplete, almost as though it's missing a half. In fact, that missing half does represent something meaningful, and that's called a bra. At least that's how I think it's pronounced. I've tried looking online for pronunciations, but the one website I found was a forum post, which, like most forum posts, evolved into an argument between a couple of angry neckbeards. If you have a better pronunciation, let me know in the comments. Anyway, the bra can be thought of as some kind of conjugate of the ket vector. For instance, if our ket vector was a spin-up vector, 1 and 0, its bra would be the conjugate transpose of the ket vector, which would again be 1 and 0, but now is a row vector instead of a column vector. If our ket vector was a function, the corresponding bra vector is just the complex conjugate of that function. Now if we combine the bra and the ket, the two halves of the one whole, we'll get something called a bracket. The bracket is used to represent the inner product in Hilbert space. For instance, if our vector psi is again 1 and 0 for the spin-up state of a particle, the bracket between the bra form of psi and the ket form of psi is the exact same as the complex inner product in Cn. If psi is a function, then the bracket notation tells us that the inner product of psi with itself is just the complex conjugate of f times f. And that should cover the basics of Dirac notation. In the next video, we'll be going further and discussing the properties of bras, cats, and brackets.